All right, so this is going to be a quick explanation of the NRF and why sometimes you guys are not able to get it to talk to each other. So right now I have a transmitter here connected to a Pico, a receiver connected to a Pico as well. It's lighting up the LED every time a message comes through. It's also sending it to my phone via Bluetooth. Uh, the Arduino is also receiving that message. So these two are receivers, this one and this one and this is a transmitter and you will be seeing it here on the phone so let me display my desktop <clears throat> so you can see that uh, both the Arduino is displaying on the serial communications and then I'm also displaying it on my phone so if I reset my transmitter you can see both of them stop and restart at the same time so that's the data I'm getting. Um, the, uh, so the way I have it connected is here on this picture. I don't remember the pinout, but you can figure out by the, the labels I have here and the pin numbers. The LED is connected to this pin here, number 20. Um, so one of the things you have to consider is the length of wires connected from your NRF to your processor. Here, there's really no wires, right? So a lot less noise. Any wires, any, anything that is floating over the air is going to be acting like an antenna. And the clock and the data, uh, data lines are constantly sending data back and forth. So that's you're transmitting data, uh, even though that's not what you want, and it's going to interfere with your device. You also want a capacitor uh, between ground and power um, and that has to be, you know, for uh, for this little units, it's not really necessary. But for the big ones, the ones that have uh, the amplifier, the antenna, uh, you want 20 microfarads minimum. And 100 would be ideal for those right next to the device. And that will make it that it works 100% of the time reliably. So let's look at the code to see what. <clears throat> what's important here so this is the configuration this is the receiver this is a transmitter so on this side I'm showing the data the the logic sending the data right so uh, <clears throat> this one here you know I have my uh, defining my library at the NRF 24 the important um, settings here are the name the channel and the length of data or the payload <clears throat> There's also some default settings on the background. Since I always use it this way, I, I just have it defaulted to those settings all the time. So uh, the default settings is I do not use acknowledgements because I just want to send data out there and whoever gets it, I don't want to receive anything back. And that way I can send this data out and I can have as many receivers as I want without having to specify any channels. <clears throat> uh, also, I'm also uh, using two megabits uh, of data or the data rate, right? So those settings, the acknowledgements, the, the data rate, and these three settings, they have to match for communications to be successful all the time. And, you know, obviously this is my receiver. So this is a receiver code. You can see this thing matches. There's your name, channel number two, and the payload is size 10. <clears throat> and I'm just waiting for a message to come in. When I get it, I light up the LED on GPIO 15 or pin number 20. Get the message, put it in a variable, and then send it to the phone. Wait 50 microseconds just so I can see the effect of the LED. This is not really necessary. And then if I don't re on the next loop, if I don't receive a message, then I just turn turn the LED off. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> On the Arduino, same thing, right? So I have channel number two, which needs to match the channel. Uh, I have the payload size of 10. I have the data rate as one, which means one equals two megabits according to their settings. And then uh, the name is gyro C. And I'm not using acknowledgement. So those are the settings in order to communicate between Arduino and if you use my libraries, which have default settings for things that I don't think are useful, at least for my projects, and they never have been. 
and then the rest is identical right just listen for data and if you receive it you go receive your data and then you print it to the serial uh well you put in a message to format it correctly and then you print it to the serial port so it's the same thing um so i just want to highlight something here that for new people that are getting into uh, microcontrollers in general not just arduino but uh, so if you're new and you're constantly looking for libraries i would advise that you first uh, take a weekend a few days and learn how to use or learn how spi actually works not the bits and all of that the protocol itself but just how to read and write using spi just the raw spi it can be on any any processor any language it doesn't matter just learn how to use spi properly and i square c so those two protocols will give you access to the majority of sensors and devices out there because that's how they communicate most of them uh any almost any device for arduino uh, communicates via those two protocols and then you, you have uart or serial communication which is handy as well but those two spi and i square c are the the most useful ones that you can learn once you know those two it doesn't matter which library you use if it doesn't work you'll figure it out really quickly within minutes of why it's not working because you can communicate with a device directly using SPI or I square C look at the settings and determine why it's not working and then you'll know how to tweak the library or how or what needs to happen in this case the settings I need to change so in this instance when it wouldn't communicate with the Pico I just went in and uh, read the register for the configuration and register number one for the data rate and realized that it wasn't the same as my settings and I just went and changed them right I just went and looked to see if this guy here had settings to change those uh, those properties and if they did then you use them and if they don't then you add to it and you make it work for you so the uh, the link for the code is in the description you can go and download the entire code including the libraries uh, the way they are here for the receiver the transmitter and the receiver uh, on the Arduino side as well so you can go test it if you if you like um, so that is pretty much it enjoy